Um, well, it was, uh, I, I, I've been coming to the Glee for a long time. And I've been hearing this high level talk about form based code for a long time. And for me, um, the whole idea of using it in Chapel Hill seemed impossible. Uh, just the, the way that the code operates, and we've, we've just heard it um, be discussed and how it, it gets out in front of developers and defines what you want before you even hear what someone might build is just the opposite of the way things have been done in Chapel Hill forever. Um, and if you're on my bus uh, during the tour, I, I mentioned this. Um, here in Chapel Hill, we have a, uh, we've used a, uh, a process that, well, we have, we've had comprehensive plans. We've used them for a long time. And the last time we did a comprehensive plan, we didn't change any of the zones on the ground. But we did tell everybody that we would accept different kinds of things in, in certain parts of, of the community. So because we had a comprehensive plan that was out of line with the existing zoning on the ground, when someone came in with a project that, said, that was aligned with our comprehensive plan, they always had to also ask for a rezoning. And we would use the rezoning process the legislative process to extract value for our community. And we were extraordinarily successful. And we, and for many reasons, one of which, one of which is that we're a very desirable place to invest um, in, in, a, in, the, in an area that is um, one of the fastest growing and most attractive parts of the country, the research triangle. We are arguably one of the most attractive parts within that region to invest in. So we could get whatever we wanted. We could and we created a great affordable housing uh, model that uh, provided for inclusionary affordable, affordable units in almost in every development that's been built in this town since 2000. Um, without having to worry about, and this is, without, this is even before we had an inclusionary zoning ordinance. When we have one now, um, but it never even had to be used because we're using our zoning authority to get it. And just one example, but just extracting value. If you want a new zone, then you give us what we want. Are we good successful? So we had this we had this area that was for that we went on a tour. Uh, we just went returned from uh, we just toured. And just to orient you, uh, Franklin Street, which is right up here, you keep going out. You may remember this is where the Trader Joe's was. This is the Rams Plaza area. Over here was the cemetery. Remember driving past that? Well, this is as Eric reminded our people on our bus, the number two most important commercial center in town, right? We have lots of residential property taxpayers who have been asking us why aren't our commercial areas producing a little more revenue to provide for these things we need in our community? Why is this, after downtown, why is it failing? And being failure being defined as why is it not spitting out the tax revenue that's supposed to provide for the amenities that maintain the greatest town in America? Because if you drove by, you saw where I bought a Bobo once upon a time. There are weeds growing out of an empty lot, right? And how about that strip mall where you may have seen a food lion? I tell people, even people who've lived in this town for decades, I ask them this question. Have you ever told anyone how to get to that food lion? Because the transportation road system around that shopping center is like someone threw spaghetti on the road and said, let's lay the roads there. You, it's impossible. You actually have to get lost in order to discover how to get to the moon line. It's, it's the challenge. Um, and because of that, the commercial activity in that center and, and the budget of this district is just not producing what we would expect. And we have sacrificed for the last 40 years in order to have this here. We've given up uh, open space. We paid almost every inch of this district over the last 40 years. And what are we getting for that sacrifice? Little to nothing. And in some places, less than nothing. Because like that old Bobo dealership now costs our community more than it, than, it, than it could provide. So we're getting less in exchange for huge sacrifices. And even if you just measure the in terms of impervious pay. Well, we like to think you know, that there's some great things about our community. And we like to believe that they're centered in, that, in our values. Values around community around connecting people uh, um, uh, from different walks of life, um, uh, about having options for people. Um, and we believe that if we want, to re we want to create and inspire redevelopment in this area, it has to be based on our values. It can't just be this rote application of a code 
And so you and I are hardly talking about it. It just doesn't feel really fair to chapter Bill. And because of that, I think we had a hard time having form-based code conversations. And you may have felt the same way, just hearing how the form-based code works in Nashville. It feels kind of cold and rote and mechanical. It doesn't feel like Chapel Hill, where we, we focus on the need to, uh, of community, choice, and equity. Um, it doesn't always seem to come out of this code, even when the code has pictures. It sometimes seems, <laughs> it sometimes seems to miss it. So this is what it used to be. This is what our zoning map used to look like, and yours might, you might be familiar with just commercials, uninspiring. People who wanted to invest in this area, um, who wanted to create change, looked at what was on the ground, and they said, well, okay, well, I'll come in and, and, and put an application in for Rams Plaza and redevelop it. Then we said, okay, sure, now you're going to need a new zone. In order to get that new zone, you're going to give us new roads. In order to get that new zone, you're going to give us new stormwater facilities. In order to get that new zone, you're going to give us affordable housing. And they kind of like, I could all that. <laughs> Not know what the hell was the response. And it just sits there. It sits there. This is not the picture that was inspiring the investment that should be producing the revenue for our community that is largely residential property tax payers. But here it is. This is um, you know, that Rams Plaza. And we, but we, had, we had this vision that seems much more community oriented. This is what we wanted it to look like. And we went through a small area planning process before we even got to the idea of a code. And this is what the community in the small area planning process said that they wanted it to look like. Not like this, but like this. But we were, it was very clear to us that we didn't have the tools to inspire that kind of redevelopment because nothing was happening here after year after year. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Um, okay, so we did this small area plan in 2011. We had all these, these meetings, um, and we began the process of implementing it. And uh, so, you know, we thought the vision, and that's the traditional way in Chapel Hill, create the vision, then they'll go build it. <laughs> that's how small area planning works in a, in a highly desirable investment community like Chapel Hill, right? It, this didn't work. It, alone, just the vision wasn't enough with the SMIRE plan. So in our implementation, we decided we needed to actually be proactive as part of it. Well, how about we do some foundational studies? What if we produce some information for the development community that would help them? So we went ahead and did some traffic analysis. We, did, we went ahead and got some money to apply to planning for the improvement of some of our intersections that were failing that you know make it impossible to get to the food line. We went out and um, we had we had a community-wide market analysis on like what kind of retail, uh, what kind of commercial activity is going to be successful in different parts of the community. And so we thought, well hey, beginning to implement this small area plan by providing this kind of data and seeking some investment and doing some planning ahead on some of this transportation improvements, well that'll be enough. Right? Because they were providing value from the public sector. Now they'll come and invest. And again, I think we got a Starbucks out of it, and we got an auto parts store. Still not reflective of the values, or particularly of that vision of what the Smart Air Plan said they wanted. We went through a, co a comprehensive planning process, and our comprehensive plan, which we we used to do it where we have a plan, you know, we all have planning boards, planning commissions, right? We used to put comp planning into the hands of planning boards. And our 2000, 2001 comp plan, that they, they led our comprehensive planning process. And uh, they, held, they held a few meetings back in 1999 and 2000, and we developed this really big, thick, no pictures, just text, comprehensive plan um, that outlined our, our community's needs for the next decade. Well, after I became there, our community decided we needed to do a new comprehensive plan. And having just our planning commission, our planning board, drive the effort wasn't going to be enough. Because we were, just like you, coming out of a recession, we were experiencing a lack of interest and investment in our community for the first time in forever. And that's why we were stuck with this ethicist district the way it is. And we also decided we, needed, we, we had to look at planning citywide a different way. So we said, how about instead of nine members of the planning commission, let's get 10,000 Chapel Hill people to do our comprehensive plan. And that's what we did. We went out and we got 
more voices involved in our comprehensive planning process than we've, I've ever heard about being involved in the comprehensive planning process. And part of it is most of it's thought that that was right there. We went out and talked to about every, ten, every one of those 10,000 people. And one of the things, we had our, um, uh, well, we had our meetings around that, and what we heard from the comp plan process was, what about applying a form-based code? Some people had heard about it. I heard about it, some of us in the community, some voices were taken out of the ground. What if we got ahead of the development community and went ahead and said what we wanted? Put it on the ground and see if people would invest in that situation. Because what we were doing wasn't quite making it. So we talked about how those zones might work and we started having meetings around the community. Um, you know, meetings that look like this, lots of people, lots of citizens. We, looked, we took maps of the district, which had originally started off small and grew to encompass the area that we tour today. Um, and uh, we began to identify you know, where some uses, not uses, actually what forms would be best in these spaces. Because the forms were just incompatible with that vision that you saw from our small area plan. There were no corners, beautiful little corners that pedestrians could walk across. It was none of that. There, 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 was no, uh, uh, there were no benches on the streets where you could sit, and there were places where you could walk your dog. There's just none of that. Um, and so we need to create those new places where the, a public realm could exist where those kind of activities could occur. And so we started cutting it up. The strip malls, bad. City blocks, good. Um, we, we said, we need, we, need, we need walls of buildings with windows that are kind of about this far apart, not Played huge brick facades. We said we needed um, sidewalks that were wide enough for people to walk down, um, maybe more than just in single file. Uh, we needed uh, streets that you could cross in a car, in a truck, on your feet, and on a bike. We needed, we needed to be able to get across the streets with all those. If you want, if you're riding on that on 15501, it's not anything you would want to cross on anything other than a truck. Maybe not in a car. A truck maybe feels safe. Sometimes the traffic is so bad <coughs> they really want to harm it. Um, so we had these discussions. We, we started identifying some uh, uh, elements that, that kind of suggested that we were on the right track. And we knew that we had we had something that could work. Right? We have uh, we have high quality retail which are still functioning here. We did have interest in redeveloping this is the rest of the area but they said they wouldn't provide us the public benefits we demanded, so we weren't getting that to us. There was interest in what it would be there. And heck, we were Chapel Hill. We had places that worked. We were a desirable market. We had assets. But the areas, we got specific reports on areas challenges were. The traffic, we went through that area at the perfect time of day, um, which one of the few times we can actually move and actually get back anywhere on time. Um, it, particularly in the morning and the afternoon, uh, that corridor is slammed. And the roads are such that, well, they're configured, there are curb cuts along Ephesus Fordham, right near the bypass, that, are, that occur like every 15 feet. You can't have curb cuts that close together and expect traffic to ever move during the rush hour. The traffic was awful. You saw, well, this is where I got my bowl, well, and there's some weeds still in here. The gaps. I mean, we went past where the Whole Foods was. There used to be this huge multi-screen movie theater that went under, and we could never get, well, we, and we actually approved a couple of permits to rebuild, but nobody ever did anything. It just sits there, empty lots, in the greatest town in America. That can't be. <laughs> um, we, we had to figure out another way of doing that. You know, what I, the best thing, the best part about that, that they can buy is that there's that gorgeous chain link fence. You see that? It creates this extraordinary vista um, of the greenway that's supposed to go behind it, which still doesn't exist. Um, we need to fill in these gaps. And um, this is also at the bottom of Chapel Hill. This is where all the water from almost the entire rest of the community ends up. Which is why, you, as you would expect, in 1970s ish, we built a shopping center over the creek. <laughs> right? Isn't that what you do? You build a shopping center over the creek that drains the entire community? That's just dumb. 
other thing. We, that was dumb. But today, there's the Trader Joe's on top. Um, and a Starbucks and a Talbots and a Grey Outdoor Provision Company. It ain't going well. So we can't just, you know, uh, daylight the creek. But we could say that we would want to if you would be and we could and we can we can say what we would like want and rezone it so that perhaps an investment could happen. But it becomes a flooding nightmare and has been a flooding nightmare. As more development occurred upstream, this area just became very problematic and stormwater became one of the leading issues. Um, so these are the issues that actually drove the conversation. Traffic is horrible, underperforming gap, retail gaps, and stormwater problems. And we needed zones that were going to that were going to do that, as well as meet the values of, uh, that, that define our comprehensive plan that, that, that the community always defines itself around: sustainability, options, equity, community, connection. And so we thought about how we could renew Ephesus Florida. And these are kind of the, the key topics. So these are the key interests that were often mentioned by people who were engaged in the process. And it sounds like the perfect town, right? We just want, we just want Ephesus Florida to be as perfect as the rest of the town. Um, we wanted green space, we wanted transit, we wanted, wanted to look pretty. We needed the stormwater to improve, we needed the traffic to improve. So we developed some zones. Um, and now the map looks like this. And instead of having these use-defined zones, like I'm sure you're familiar with, they just have mixed use and resident, residential. That's the only use that's conceived of. Um, it's either mixed use, whatever that is, as long as it fits within the regs, and residential. Um, this is kind of, you know, we don't have to necessarily know all the details of uh, each one of these zones, but we have ended up de de defining several of them, um, and creating, I'll just stop on this one, and creating a, the beginning of a new network of streets. Um, and, you know, the, the, a new street. This is the gap, that empty lot, right? Strip, strip, strip center here, a new street, a new street. The first building to be built is about to come in for permit review. It's gonna be built right here where a new street's going to be built into the lot and behind it to create, begin the creation of a new street grid. And a corner that people can cross and buildings can face. We, we, uh, when, the econo when we look at our economic develop, uh, benefits, um, we came up with, we believe this is going to be the mix. It's going to be a lot of residential um, and affordable housing. We are committed, we used to extract, and we still do extract affordable housing for most people, but we can't extract affordable housing if we already lay the zone down, right? So what we had to look for other options to address affordable housing, and we, we identified our town assets. We own part of a cemetery, or a future cemetery. Um, and most cities are getting out. I don't know if you guys all still in the business of cemeteries? Kind of? Well, we're getting out of it. And we, that was a decision that's been kind of made, that we already made. We were ready to be done with being in the cemetery. We, we're, we, our plan is to use the town-owned property to, uh, in cooperation with a nonprofit affordable housing developer, to create affordable housing. We just finished an application process that we weren't successful in, but we're, we are committed to continuing and going forward to get that application approved for the next year. And then finally, let me just get one more thing because I think this will help us have a conversation. We have some great we have some great financing tools, which I'm happy to talk about during the conversation. But the people of Chapel Hill, some of them wanted you to see something yesterday. If you didn't get it at, at the newspaper, um, I want to make sure you see it. This, this process was not without controversy. A half-page ad was purchased in yesterday's Chapel Hill News so that if you had a chance to get the paper, you could read it. Um, it, was just per it was just purchased and printed by people who had some, diff had some challenges with the process that was used in order to uh, uh, finally approve this four base code. Um, I am counsel, or I don't know another word, condemned <laughs> by this. Um, there, this is a difficult process for a community that's, that's used to doing things a different way. Um, but I believe that what we, and the, our final product, 
provides for flex the flexibility to actually change and respond to things um, that can be that can address some of the concerns of those who fear, um, I believe, fear the change that might occur. I can understand that fear because we're using a different process. Um, but uh, I know that the council and the mayor are committed to helping people through it and responding uh, by cre creating changes to the code um, as necessary in order to be responsive. But I want to make sure that this stays out here for you because the people are you really wanted to see this. And I think it's fair for you to see it. Because like I said last night, um, or this morning when, when we started, we don't, we don't do everything perfectly in Chapel Hill. I suspect you don't either. And nothing gets done with, you know, with unanimity throughout the community. We all have to deal with, um, with the pain of change and trying to create change. And I would love to get your feedback on this as well as the actual product. And um, uh, so I'll, I'll leave it up. I know that Heidi wants to have a couple. Thank you. Thank you.